Hi, I'm Anne and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be wrapping up the books that I read in November of 2021. Only one more month left of 2021. Cheers! This month was a pretty good reading month, especially for me being getting ready for finals. Uh, next week are my finals, so wish me luck. The reason I did succeed in reading more books than I probably would have is because I was finishing a lot of bigger books that I've been reading throughout this semester for my classes. So I have a few like whopper big books here. So in total, I read 13 books this month, which is pretty good. So I'm going to be going through the books that I read this month. And I'm going to be talking about my TBR for next month, December, I'm in the mood for like cozy reads. Also, my hair is incredibly wet right now. I just took my shower and I know it's a mess. But you know, what? we're just gonna roll with it because there's only certain times I can film. So we're just gonna do it now. So I'm gonna go from the lowest rated to the highest rated. So let's go. <laughs> um, the first book, uh, I feel bad for not liking because I really enjoyed the first book of this series. And that is Truth of the Divine by Lindsay Ellis. She's a YouTuber and one that I have loved in the past. I love all her videos. So I was really happy when I enjoyed the first book of this series, which is called Axiom's End. Basically, it tells the story of this young woman who uh, meets aliens, it deals with the social and uh, political repercussions if aliens actually came to Earth and she ends up bonding with the main alien, the main alien character, Ambersand, and that's the first book. I really enjoyed the first book. I know a lot of people thought it was mediocre at best, but I'm not really into sci-fi books, so I didn't have a lot of like big knowledge about the sci-fi genre, but I enjoyed the first book and so I was really excited to read the second book and um, I was disappointed. I gave this 1.75 stars. My main issues of why it was so bad is in, in the first book, Korra, uh, this human, is the main character. And Amber Sand is kind of the second main character, the alien. And I loved not only their like dynamic of working together, but also how they faced problems in the world. Um, but in this second book, it basically just shoves Cora to the side. She's now like a drug addict uh, at, because of like all the things she's witnessed and had to endure in the first book. And she's just dealing with some shit. And that's the entire arc of her character. Like she's probably in the book about 25% of the time. And Amber Sand is in probably even less. The beginning, I started to enjoy it because it really felt like the same type of book as the first book. But by the time we got to the halfway mark, I was completely checked out. I was so disappointed with this book. And I think it was because you introduced these new characters that were going to play almost the main characters. And you had kind of the same issue of like political stuff going on in a sense like it's felt the same but it also felt nothing like the first book and I understand like Alice has said that she wanted to make a very different sequel and it, it does feel like that but all the good things that I enjoyed about the first book felt devoid here and I appreciate like, yes, if a real person had to deal with this trauma, yeah, they'd be pretty messed up. So it makes sense that Cora's messed up, but she never dealt with it until like the very end, she kind of dealt with it. But I was just disappointed with this book. The second book is one that I read for my book club, and that is Mirror Mirror by Cara Delevingne. Basically, this is following a group of high school students who are part of this band. They form this band that is called Mirror Mirror. One of them goes missing, one of the girls, and she is found nearly dead. She's in a coma. And so in one sense, they're trying to like piece together what happened to her, but also deal with a lot of shit that they're dealing with, with their family and with social life. So. It's kind of like a coming of age story with the mystery on the side. I really enjoyed the mystery aspects, but that was probably only like 25% of the book. And all the other aspects I just did not like. Like, it was interesting to see just how messed up all their families were. But the other girl in the group, the one that isn't in the coma, she is an absolutely horrible human being. The main character, um, has a plot twist. I'm not going to give it away, but it was such a pointless, stupid plot twist. And I was like, 
Okay, and then they like shoved it into your face for the rest of the book that yes, this was a plot twist. I'm like, you, you can stop, you can stop, you can chill. <laughs> uh, so the mystery was good. Uh, so again, I gave this 1.75 stars. So like the mystery, I give it like four stars. But the uh, like teen angst stuff, it just felt at times over the top, a bit ridiculous. None of the characters were likable to me. Yeah, it, it missed the mark for me. All right, the next one uh, I actually ordered during October, but I didn't get it till this month. So that is Nothing But Blackened Teeth by Cassandra Kaw. Basically, this is a story which tells about this vacation that this group of friends take to Japan and they go to this very old house that was built like in the 1200s or something like that. And there are rumors of like a curse on this house. One of the couples is planning to get married there. The main character is like the ex of the husband or the soon to be husband. And there are rumors of this like cursed woman who uh, seeks revenge on those who bother her or something like that. I don't know. So this was more of a short story. It was more of a novel. It was like 100 pages. It was very short. Uh, I gave it 2.5 stars because the drama between the characters and that conflict and them like sinking further into madness was fascinating. But it didn't have to be set in Japan. It didn't have to have a ghost in it. The ghost was not even that main of character <laughs> like the ghost barely came in at all there was this like whole thing of like this curse and we're we're going to be like consumed by this house and yet it was kind of ignored for most of the story for like the group angst between them which the group angst was interesting enough but when you're setting it into a lush setting like Japan and the haunted mansion and if you know anything about Japanese mythology there is just so much fascinating Japanese mythology out there and I feel like this book just missed the mark on any type of Japanese culture or mythology. Really liked the like drama aspects but if you're gonna make like a horror about Japanese culture don't have it be about something else and just have the Japanese culture in the background. I don't know I didn't like that that much but I did give it 2.5 stars so it's not horrible. It just wasn't great. Uh, the next book I read is the other one for my book club and that is Monstrous Devices by Damien Love. I gave this I gave almost three stars. I gave it 2.75 stars. It's a middle grade book about this boy who uh, has this robot and then he finds himself attacked by these other robots um, like real live robots and his grandfather saves him and they go around the the most of Europe. They go to like Paris and there's these people who are trying to get this toy robot that the main character has. For a middle grade book, I feel like it was trying to do too much and that's why it failed a little bit for me. There were great adventure scenes. I enjoyed some of the like funny characters like Harry, who is a friend of uh, main character's grandfather. I really enjoyed his character, but for the most part, I felt like there was too much going on. There's this whole thing of like, god and this like mythos with god but then you have more of like the steampunk kind of elements and then you have more of the traveling adventure elements and it was just too much especially for a middle grade book which has light characters and light fun adventures it was just a bit too much for me it's not a horrible book i did almost give it three stars so it's not like it's horrible but um i feel like compared to other middle grade books I've read. I didn't enjoy it quite as much. So the next book I read is Woman of No Importance by Sonia per Purnell. So this book is a nonfiction about this woman called Virginia Hall who served as a spy mostly in France during World War II and it is about her life. It doesn't deal with entirely just her years of espionage in France. It also deals with her entire life from the beginning of her life to the end of her life. Um, I gave this 2.75 stars again. The things I really liked about it is for a history book, it is very accessible. It feels like more of a narrative fiction. So if you are not a huge fan of like dense, dry histories, this is a great book for you. I also enjoyed just how dangerous Purnell showed being a spy was. I'm not super familiar with espionage in, during this time in World War II. Uh, so I found it really interesting, like just how dangerous things were. If you told one person the wrong thing, your entire network of spies could be caught. Like if one spy was caught, they could be tortured and reveal all this information about the other spies. Like it was an extremely dangerous situation to work in. And I really enjoyed learning about that. 
However, the main argument that Purnell makes is that Virginia Haw was ignored during her time and put down and she had to fight tooth and nail to succeed in being a spy because no one wanted her there in a sense. And then even after her life, she's been kind of ignored by historians, which there's a lot of spies that have been ignored by historians. So I don't think you can make a strong argument for that. And like, there's a lot of great people in history that have been ignored by historians. I feel like historians like fixate on just like a few ones. Usually it's like the most dramatic stories. But because of that, she portrays Virginia Hall as this perfect person. Like if she fails in a mission, it's not her fault. It's like the men who worked above her or uh, it's this person that like let something slip to the Germans or something like that. Uh, or if all these people said, yeah, she's really difficult to work with, even if she's good with her job. Oh yeah, she wasn't actually difficult to work with. It was just them being jealous of how amazing she was. And I just disliked how Purnell made her arguments. In this book, it was like that Virginia Hall was too good for this world, almost. That she wasn't appreciated during her life. But in order to do that, she had to put down everyone. <laughs> it felt like almost everyone. She looked like Purnell looks down on Hall's mother, uh, her family, um, pretty much everyone above her in the spy network. Like, in order to raise Virginia Hall up, Purnell has to portray everyone as being horrible. And I really disliked that because I don't think it's true to history. Everyone is complex. Virginia Hall wasn't perfect. You know, she had her weaknesses. She was willing to do anything to get the job done, even to the detriment of others. And and I saw that a little bit hinted to in this book, but then Purnell like spins it another way. And I'm like, no, it doesn't seem like that. And I really dislike that. I really dislike this idea of painting someone as a perfect hero in history. The same thing we see with certain historical male individuals throughout history, like historians would paint them as these great heroes. I'm sorry, like even if they did great stuff, it doesn't make them perfect. No one is perfect. And I, I just like that. I don't know. I don't know. So I, I gave it 2.7 stars because that really drew down my enjoyment of the book, even though it was an interesting book. Next one is book 15 of Her Royal Spiness, God Rest Ye Royal Gentlemen by Rice Bowman. Uh, this is the newest, newest book in this cozy mystery series that I have, I've loved for years. Uh, it follows Georgie in the 1930s, and she is related, she's the granddaughter of Queen Victoria. Um, so she's like royal, but she's kind of impoverished. But at this point in the series, she's married and um, her and her husband go on vacation to his aunt for Christmas. And um, of course there's mystery and murder. And here's my problem with this book. It gets the cozy part right for the first like 60%. Just completely focuses on that. There's no murder mystery, anything like that until like the 60 for percent mark. So the book definitely feels like two different stories. Like you have that cozy Christmas feel, which I, I was enjoying. And then you have that like darker murder mystery. And the two parts didn't go together that well. Usually if you weave a uh, murder mystery throughout the entire book, it's better. I did give this three stars. That's so not like I hated it, but um, I would have liked if the mystery and the murder was weaved in better earlier on. The next book I read from a military history class, and that is The Nation Forged in War by Thomas A. Bruchino. Bruchino? Uh, basically, this story argues that uh, World War II and World War II veterans changed America. Uh, it argues that because vet because soldiers were kind of like squished together with all these different ethnicities and religions, it broke down lines of bigotry and discrimination and in a sense brought the country together. And in one sense, like he, he does pretty well to prove his argument. He does have like 20 examples where only like five are needed. So he goes a little bit overboard. Uh, but also he doesn't really discuss any type of like racist discrimination. He mentions blacks being segregated in the army during World War II, but he makes no mention at all of Asian discrimination, which was a big thing that was going on in, in America during the time, especially anti-Japanese sentiment, obviously. Um, but in general, like a lot of people 
when they saw an Asian, it wasn't like they would assume, oh yeah, this is Chinese, this is a Korean. Like they'd say, this is Asian, they're bad. Um, and he doesn't discuss that at all or like whether it changed. So basically he's focusing on mostly a re religion and white variants, <laughs> I guess, which isn't necessarily wrong, but I feel like it's missing an important point in history. Like, yes, it's great that like Catholics and Presbyterians and Methodists are able to get along, but does that mean that it changed at all for blacks and Asians or things like that? So I would have liked a more fuller picture, but it is an interesting history book. It's a little bit dense and hard to read, but it, it's not that hard to read. And I feel like if you were interested in this topic without being like a scholar, you could still read it and enjoy it. All right, so the next book is the first extremely long book that I read this month. And that is The Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. This is almost 800 page book. I'm so glad I was able to read it. Um, I was hoping to get to it last month, but it didn't come into my library until a couple days before the end of October. And I was like, there's no way I can finish it during that time. But basically it tells the life of Gabriel. He is a silver st saint which is basically a member of this brotherhood that seeks to kill vampires. And he is half vampire himself. So his father was a vampire, his mother was not. Um, the story starts with him being imprisoned by vampires and just telling his story from when he was younger all the way up to the present day. This story is set kind of in a pseudo uh, medieval world. The Brotherhood is very similar to uh, Catholic monasteries and monks uh, with how their traditions are, but it's very like face value. So that's one thing I struggled with. I did give this book 3.75 stars, so it wasn't like I hated it, but it definitely rubbed me wrong for them, for Jay Kristoff to like take so many things out of Christianity that he liked, but get none of the theology. It was just more of the outward signs of Christianity uh, and like traditions, prayers, without any understanding of like the, the theology. So religion is presented pretty badly in this. But moreover, you have the ultimate villain would, who are of course the vampires. You have the forever king, I think he's called. Because he's a vampire, that means he'll rule forever because he's immortal. And he's slowly taking over the uh, world and this brotherhood of silver saints, uh, which Gabriel is trained to be part of, uh, they are trying to take out all the vampires and stop this global annihilation of the world, basically, where vampires take over. I feel like in modern literature, vampires are often portrayed as like these sexy, uh, sparkly, like Twilight, um, just this, these sensual creatures. <laughs> And I really enjoyed how this one paints vampires. Yes, they drink blood, but they are the monsters from like Bram Stoker's Dracula. These are dark, vicious creatures. These are not nice and light and like sexy vampires. No, these are brutal killers. And I really enjoyed how the vampires were portrayed. But then there's also these rumors of this holy grail that will save the world. So Gabriel has to like find it. The other thing I really didn't like about the book is it is divided into parts. I think there's six or seven parts. And one part is when Gabriel is younger and he's being trained to be a silver saint at this essentially a monastery. And then you have after he has left stopped becoming the silver saint when he's much older, you have his quest to find the Holy Grail. So you have it jumping back and forth and you'll have like a hundred pages of him being younger and then a hundred pages of him being older. And I really hated that. I, I would have enjoyed it so much better if you had the first half of the book divided into his younger years and then you had like the conclusion of that and then flipped to his older years. I think I would have enjoyed that so much better but it is a fun book. And I look forward to reading the rest of the series. It also has quite a lot of swearing, which at times rubbed me wrong, but I, it fit for the characters. So it's not like it wasn't fitting, but for me, I just don't like where reading a lot of books with swearing, but I, I did enjoy it. I almost gave it four stars. In fact, if it didn't have the swearing, I definitely give it four stars. All right, now we come to the next uh, tome that I read this month uh, or finished this month, which is War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. I did a full review for this book. If you want to hear my full thoughts about it, uh, I gave it four stars. Um, the only reason I didn't give it five stars is simply because it it does have a lot of unnecessary parts and Tolstoy repeats himself a lot. 
the main plot, the main themes are very powerful and great, but it could probably be like 800 pages instead of the 1200 and nothing would be lost. So I, I enjoyed it though. The next book I read, which is also four stars, is Village School by Miss Reed. This was my first Miss Reed book and it was just great and cozy, but I was also definitely in the mood for it. I started it in October and then I finished it this uh, in November and it was really nice to just like sit down and read just a cozy light book. It follows this character named Miss Reed um, who runs this schoolhouse and in the 1950s I would say and it just talks about like problems they have and um, cozy going through the entire school year. Uh, it goes from like the beginning of school all the way to like summer of the next year. So we have like Christmas time. It's, it's just a very cozy read. I read this book because Gina, Gina Stanier is always talking about it. And I'm so glad I did because it was such a cozy read. I don't see myself like running to read all these books, but I feel like if I'm in the mood for like just a nice cozy read, this is the perfect series for it. The next book I read is Modern Martyr by Theophane Venard. So Theophane Venard was this um, 19th century Catholic missionary who went to Vietnam and was martyred, killed for his faith there. And the most of this book is comprised of letters between Theophane and different people. Uh, in the beginning, it's mostly him and his sister. He was very close to his sister. And so the first half follows him in missionary school and then deciding to go and become a mission. He was born in a small village in France. And the second half is actually him going to Vietnam, which is, is called a very weird name, Tonquin. It's apparently like a northern part of Vietnam. I'm not sure if it was the traditional name or if they still call it that, but like I was really confused when they kept saying Tonquin and I'm like, well, yeah, but it's Vietnam. <laughs> but this book was also written in like 1905 or something like that. It was published um, and it's basically this editor who has put together all of Theophane Venard's letters as well as other letters to present like a full picture of his life. Uh, the first half of the book I didn't find as interesting. It, basically focuses on Venard's spiritual journey, his thoughts of like what he wants to do with in life. And while that is interesting, I definitely preferred the second half because it gets into what life was like in Vietnam during that time for Christians, how horrible it was. There was this king on the throne in Vietnam who uh, executed in total, I think it was like 5,000 Christians. That includes like priests as well, uh, nuns, um, both Vietnamese as well as like foreign priests who came in. So yeah, it was, it was a pretty horrific time. So second half, five stars. Amazing. Uh, first half, a little bit less, probably more like four stars, a little bit less. Um, but a really good book and I'm glad I read it. The next book is the last like big book that I had to read for school and that is Herodotus the Histories. Um, this is about the Persian and the Greek war in like 500 BC or something like that. Um, so Herodotus is just great. He's a historian. He he just like loves his random stories. He he loves the themes of like fate. And he, he presents this like cycle of kings like they gain power and then they get kind of full of themselves and assume that they can never fail because they've su succeeded up to this point. But the reality is that everyone needs to, everyone will fail at one point in their life. So um, it's a whopper of a book. It's like a thousand pages, but, and I really liked this translation. It is great. Uh, and it has a lot of like maps and pictures. This also includes the um, 500 uh, Leonidas, King Leonidas and the Spartans uh, hold off the Persians. <laughs> Yeah, there's also like the Battle of Marathon. There's there's a lot of cool, great battles in this, and the story's much funner and lighter than like Thucydides, which I'm currently reading. 
So yeah, I highly recommend if you're interested in Greek history, like read this book. It's well worth reading, but maybe, maybe not this copy because it is very heavy and yeah. All right. And the last book I read this month was Busman's Honeymoon by Dorothy L. Sayers. This is the last book in the Harriet Vane and Lord Peter Whimsey series. Um, it's part of the Lord Peter Whimsey series, but most of the books do not feature Harriet Vane. Uh, and I just love her so much. She bounces Peter so well. So I give this five stars. Oh, I also gave Herodotus five stars for reference. I forgot to say that. So Busman's Honeymoon takes place after Harriet and Peter have just gotten married. And it was very relatable because I'm currently planning my own wedding and to see in the first like 20 pages them like having to plan the wedding and it's just so much fun. <laughs> um, but uh, then they get to their honeymoon. They purchase like a small cottage in the country in England. And of course, the owner has vanished when they get there. So mystery. But I, I just love this mystery. I love all her mysteries. They're so good. And they have a deeper emphasis on complex characters than Agatha Christie, even though I love Agatha Christie too. But um, Dorothy Sayers just captures humanity so much better than Agatha Christie, even though Agatha Christie's mysteries are probably a step up. Um, but I still love Dorothy L. Sayers. I was supposed to read Sources of Chinese Tradition, um, which I pulled out of my glass jar of books I own that I want to read two of these per month. Unfortunately, as you can see, <laughs> I did not finish it. In fact, I just started it like a two days before the end of November. So I do want to finish it this month and I am going to draw two more, but um, we'll see. Let's hope I don't get another big one. I'm hoping because it is December and next week I will be done with my finals. I'm hoping to have more time to like just sit down and like work through this. It starts with the Shang Dynasty and it works all the way up to like 1600. So maybe the beginning of the Qing Dynasty. Um, but it's a lot. Chinese history is a lot. Uh, but I did... Uh, the other book I was supposed to read is The Modern Martyr for this month, and I finished that one. And I read The Import uh, Woman of No Importance, which is another book that I own. Uh, so I did read two books that I own this month. Now let's get to the books that I am hoping to read for next month, currently this month, because we're already in December. I'm limiting it to four books right now uh, that I need to read. Um, two are for my book club, and two I'm going to pull out for this. So the two for my book club are uh, The Last Mrs. Parrish by Liz Constantine and Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. Um, the Last Mrs. Parrish is a thriller, I believe. And the Once Upon a Broken Heart did come out this year. In fact, I saw it on the Goodreads award list, which <sighs> it's so bad. It's always so bad every year. <laughs> um, but that one is like a fairy tale, maybe why I don't know if it's a dot or YA, but it looked interesting. So those two I have to read next month. And I'm gonna pull two out of my lovely jar and hope that they are not as difficult as my big one. Just 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 wait. Just wait. Oh, okay, so this is one that I won't actually read that much. And it's the Vogue sewing book. This is quite a big book, as you can see, but I won't be detailedly reading it. Um, and there are like quite a lot of pictures. Basically, it just documents like um, details of how to sew. Um, so I think this will be a re easy read because I won't be like detailedly reading it. It's more of like a reference book for me, but I haven't had a chance to like look through it thoroughly, which is why I put it in this container. So I'm not, I'm not mad about that. That's going to be like one that's relatively easy to read. Okay. Let's hope we get another like easy one like that. I gotta lift it up. I gotta lift it up. All right. Oh. Okay, so the next one is Mandarin uh, by Robert Elegant. I don't think this will be too hard to read. It is kind of long. Uh, it is over 500 pages. So it follows this romance between these people from t these, this couple, this boy and girl from very different families. And uh, it's set in mid 19th century uh, around the Taiping Rebellion. So yeah, lots of, lots of Chinese stuff to read this month, clearly. I, this will be harder to get through, especially with sources of Chinese tradition, but I'm hoping it's not going to be that bad. So, 
there are the books that I read this month and the books I'm going to read next month. I'm not going to add on a tag to this video because I'm already doing two things in this video. So have you read any of these books? Do any of them look interesting? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked, like, subscribe. I post every Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern time and I will see you all in the next video. Hopefully less stressed from finals. <laughs> see ya. Bye.